Hi everyone, welcome to Gentle Yoga with me, Carrie Mallorca. I'm really excited to have you. Before we get started, I wanted to just remind you of a few things. Number one, I invite you to change your goals for practicing today. Whether you're experienced with Gentle Yoga or you're kind of new to it, now's the time to take a different approach in your practice. It's not a goal to achieve a certain pose or a certain look or to get anywhere at all. I invite you today to have a different goal of just checking in and reconnecting. Second, remember this is your practice. So please know that anything I suggest is just that, a suggestion. Modify any way you need to, skip it, do something completely different if you're inspired. And please remember that I will not be able to see what you're doing, so I can't offer suggestions to you in this large group format. So please make sure you take care of your own needs. Then, as I already mentioned to some of you, no props will be needed for this practice. So if you have a mat, great. If you have a blanket, great. Beyond that, you don't really need anything at all. A wall will be helpful if you have access to it. And then finally, if you're someone who likes to practice with music, please feel free to do that. I welcome that. I will be teaching without music, but I welcome you to use music if you would like. So with that, uh, we will shift into the practice. Okay. So if somebody wouldn't mind just in the chat, letting me know if you can see me in the full screen before we get going. Great, thank you. Okay, so we're going to begin now with, I just wanted to offer a few thoughts to frame our practice today. So to start out with, just find a comfortable place to kind of hang around for a moment um, while I just offer up to you just a little thought and story to share. So over these last few days and weeks, I've really been exploring in my own life and in my practice, the myth of control. In yoga, this often can be tied to the concepts of abhyasa, which means practice, and vairagya, which means letting go. So to share a story with you, I was kind of reflecting on a time last summer when I was with my family in the mountains and we were doing this really fun little ducky derby where you take rubber ducks and you kind of send them down a little mountain stream and see who wins. And we were making our own. They do these as big events sometimes. And we were doing our own little ducky derby. So we had a bunch of kids and a bunch of ducks. And I think I was more into it than anyone, I will say. But we were setting up rocks in this very shallow portion of the stream to try to direct the flow of the river and also of our ducks. So the first few times we did this, we were feeling pretty good about ourselves. We had our different ducks names based on what they looked like. There was soccer duck and like Uncle Sam dunk duck and money duck. They all had different names based on their little decorations on their ducks. And so we'd put our ducks in and we'd cheer for them and we'd be so excited to see them all follow the flow. But after a couple times, we found that some of the ducks went rogue and it wasn't the ducks fault, it was the river. So the current of the river was telling us that it didn't matter what we planned. Sometimes the river and the water would flow in a different direction. Similarly, all of our hard work is important, whether in yoga practice or whether in our daily lives to kind of set up the experience that we want. But we have to know that the current of life is more powerful than any plans we can make. And to me, the best part of yoga practice is learning to go with wherever that current takes us in the most conscious and compassionate way we can. So I invite you today as we practice to keep that in mind and to really try to do both the diligent work of practicing. You've made the time and space to be here. Really give yourself over to this experience of mind, body, and breath. And then also really separate out the outcome. It doesn't matter the outcome. It's the effort and the experience in this moment that is all we can do. So take a nice big breath in and a big breath out. Another big breath in and a big breath out. 
Okay, so I'll invite you today, knowing that there's so much going on in our world around us. I know I have a lot of feelings of kind of pent up energy. We're going to start standing today. So I invite you to come to a comfortable standing position. And just start out by planting your feet. Stand up tall and we'll move with the breath. As you inhale, you can bend the knees a little, lift your shoulders up towards your ears. Exhale, roll back and down. I will say if you prefer to sit, feel free to do this sitting. Inhale, lift the shoulders up. Exhale, roll back and down. Do that a few more times. Inhale. Exhale, once more like that. And then go the opposite way, drawing the shoulders up and then rolling them forward and down. This is such a great way to draw attention to a place that many of us carry our stress, which is in the upper trapezius. So really create that ex the exertion and then try to let it go on your exhale. All right, then inhale, reach your arms up, stretch up really, really tall, Root down through your feet. Feel yourself grounding into the earth and then rise up. Big inhale. When you exhale, if it's all right on the shoulders, take hold of your wrists, lift up and over and lateral bend. Inhale up and exhale over. If this bothers the shoulders in any way, do this with the arms either up or take one arm down. Just a few moments here with lateral bend with your breath. All right, next time when you go to the lateral bend, Return back to neutral, getting up really tall. Take a big inhale, reach up. Exhale through your mouth, let the arms drop. Inhale, bend the knees, reach up. Exhale, arms drop. Once more, inhale. Exhale, good. Step the feet a little wider apart. You can let the knees bend a little. Just do this gentle playground twist. So you're letting your arms dangle around, letting some twist come through the lumbar spine and spiral up through the rest of the body. Maybe you just banged into your wall like I did, no problem. <laughs> All right, and then come back to neutral, bringing your feet back together again. Arms come out in front of you, open your arms out really wide like you're just looking up on a sunny day. Exhale, bring the palms together, bring the hands down, maybe the chin down towards the chest. So inhale, opening your arms up really wide. Exhale, bring the palms together, maybe pulling the hands down. One more time, inhaling, opening up, and exhaling, bringing the palms together and arms down. Once more now, reaching arms up, stretch up really, really tall. Big inhale, exhale, arms drop. All right, let's try a breath practice. That's one of my favorites. It's fun and maybe sometimes a little silly, but no one can see you, so go for it. So this is called breath of joy. So it's a three part inhale, sniffing in through the nose and then an exhale forcefully through the mouth. And if you have any concerns about doing a forceful breath, please don't do the breath part, just do the arms. So here's how the arms look. They'll coordinate with your breath. So the arms will come up to about shoulder height as you inhale, and then out to shoulder height as you inhale again, and then all the way up as you take your final sniffing inhale, and then exhale through the mouth. So it looks like this. So do this a few times, use your breath. It's a sniff, 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 and an exhale through the mouth. Whoops. <laughs> if you do the wrong thing, don't worry about it. It's not about being perfect, that's for sure. 
Just do this maybe two more times on your own. And then let your arms just kind of swing out. Notice how you feel here as the arms continue to swing and release down. Letting them just rest at your sides for a moment. Take a nice big inhale. And a long exhale. I invite you now, if you like, to close your eyes. And if it feels comfortable to you, to place a hand on your heart or maybe or on your chest, on your heart center, or both hands perhaps. Or if you prefer, one hand can come to rest on your belly. And so just feel your heartbeat here. Notice how that breath of joy impacted you. Observe the heartbeat, the breath pattern and find your own sense of internal rhythm. Breathing in and out, if you can, through the nose. Relaxing and releasing any effort that's not needed right now. Take just a few more breaths here, tuning in. Now you'll keep this nice, quiet, introspective feeling going. Just allow, if the eyes are closed, allow them to lightly blink open. Feel the warmth of your hands if you're using them on the body. And then just lighten up the touch of the hands before you then release them away from the body. Now I'll invite you to join me in a very simple walking meditation. So all we'll do for this is walk around the perimeter of our mat very slowly and consciously. Often in yoga, we're very static and, and steady when we are standing. So here's a chance to just bring in some movement and some mindfulness. So just a few times, we'll step one foot at a time, trying to move slowly without falling over. And link up your breath and your movement. Feel each footstep and the weight transitioning from one part of the foot to the other. Tuning in again to your connection to the earth and how you can stand strong and steady even as you're moving and even as you might be wobbling. Find your strength and steadiness. Just do one more circle around on your own at your own pace. You feel you are complete with this walking meditation, or if you prefer to continue, feel free, please. But then when you feel complete, arrive back at your mat, standing in mountain pose, just a very effortless mountain pose. Maybe again, closing the eyes for a moment or just taking a soft gaze and now feel the feet on the floor. Feel what has shifted in your awareness and just take three slow breaths here. The eyes are closed, let them blink open. And now as you inhale, just reach your arms out and up. Wherever you are on your mat is good. 
transitioning down to the floor through a half sun salute to just fold forward. Feel free to bend your knees as you fold down, hanging your head down to the floor. If it feels good to hang out here for a little bit, feel free. You can grab opposite elbows and hang down. Or if that's not quite what you're wanting to do right at this moment, just lower yourself down into table pose and then come down into a brief child's pose, connecting with the earth again. You can reach your arms forward or stack the hands. If there are any concerns about your knees, anytime I mention child's pose, try um, instead a puppy pose. Or if that is not good on the knees, come all the way to your belly in crocodile pose. Take a few breaths wherever you are, any variation that feels restful and grounding. And try to send your breath into the back of your body, filling out your back as you inhale, softening down into the mat as you exhale, or the carpet. Head nice and heavy if it is resting on something. Take three more breaths here. When you're ready, walk your hands forward and rock yourself up to hands and knees. So if kneeling is an issue, you can always do this next practice seated. You can do it by either crossing your legs or taking your legs out in front of you. We'll be doing a cat and cow movement. So this would be how to do it seated. You can do the same thing in a chair. So coming into a cat and cow, really root down into your hands or if the Wrists bother you, do the same thing on your forearms, rounding, finding that nice curve. As you inhale, feel free to tuck the toes under, draw the belly in a little bit as the chest draws forward and the face moves forward. Exhale, press the tops of your feet down, round your back up nice and high, hang your head. Inhale to create length from head to tail. Exhale to round up high. Move at your own pace in cat and cow or any other variation of a pose that really helps you feel connected to your body and your breath that addresses what your body is needing. I invite you to wiggle around, to take a little lateral curves, wiggling head and tail towards each other. You're welcome to make a little hip circling motion if that feels good. Or feel free to move back and forth from child's pose into your cat and cow pose. Just take these next few moments to connect with your breath and body and find out what's right for you this morning or afternoon or evening. Don't forget your breath. Make your breath full and deep. Enjoy that feeling of connecting your breath and your movement, getting into the body and a little more out of the thoughts. One more moment, balancing out any one directional movements you've been doing. Two more breaths. Next time you come back through neutral, come back into a nice static position for a moment. And then if you're on your belly, you'll simply just do some wrist circles. If you're seated, you can just do the same arm movement we're doing. If you're kneeling, reach your arms up overhead, clasping your fingers so that the top of your hand goes up. So when you lift your arm up, you're getting a wrist release after say, uh, spending a little time on the hands. So you can lift up and open the chest. And then exhale, pull the hips back as if to unclasp your hands. 
Inhale, lifting up, opening, reaching the tops of the hands towards the ceiling and the fingers down. Exhale, rounding. One last time, inhaling to come up. And exhale, placing your hands back down. If you're now seated, choose either kneeling or belly. We'll take a balancing table to work in some strength. So the belly version of this pose would be extending your right arm forward, and then you'll be lifting right arm and left leg. So you're doing this in opposition. Same thing if you're in kneeling. We'll start by stepping the left leg back and just rocking on your foot. Roll over the tops of your toes. Again, connecting the feet, the grounding. Feel the soles of your feet getting this lovely stretch and opening. Then bring yourself back so your shoulders are about over the wrists. Or again, forearms. Pull your belly in and up. And just start to walk the right fingertips forward if that feels all right to you. You can stay right here. If you wanted to, you could extend your arm alongside your ear or lift the back leg. If you go there and then you think, nope, just put the leg or arm back down. This is a great pose in any form, feeling to pull up the belly, you're getting some great core strength. And by not letting your head be all droopy, you're working your postural muscles. Just one more breath, holding this challenging but simple balance pose. And then lower hand and foot, and just shift the hips, rocking side to side. Now, other side. Left foot, or right foot steps back, rocking a little bit on that right foot now, rolling over the tops of the toes, feeling this lovely release in your calves and ankles, hopefully, as well as your feet. And then bring yourself to neutral, belly pulls in, notice if the hip is raised, lower the hip down. That forces more strengthening. Reach the left arm forward and feel the stability from the underside of the body, the belly. Feel the lift of the back of the head as you look down. And then whatever you did on first side, feel free to lift, trying to keep the leg or the hip parallel to the floor, or stick where you are feeling the support from the belly. Two more breaths. All right, then lower your hand, lower your knee, rock a little bit here, and just take a moment again, lifting up, this time circling your wrists. So reaching your arms up. I always imagine I'm doing like flamenco or something when I do this, reaching your arms up and reaching down. Make sure to go both directions. And then circle the other way. All right, now coming into a little more strengthening, lower down onto your forearms. So you can come into a position where your shoulders are over your elbows. And personally, I like to do it with my um, palms pressed together. I find it very stabilizing. So this is a forearm plank, but we'll have variations. So it's challenging, but gentle. So as you're coming down, the big thing is most of us will put our hips up. If you're not sure if your hips are up, you're probably, first of all, bypassing the work in most of the core of the body, most of the abdominals. But if you can see your hips over your shoulder, the hips are a bit too high. So take a look back and then draw the navel in so it's almost a bit of a tuck, one of the few places you're going to want to tuck. Bring your shoulders forward so now you're in a nice long line and you'll feel a little bit shaky in your belly. That's good. So hang out here, tucking your toes under. And if your knees are feeling a little iffy, just move the knees around so you find a good spot. Um, I didn't mention, but if you have a blanket, slide it in. I'm on carpet, it's so cushiony. <laughs> All right, so pushing into the form so you're lifting up, you're not dipping down. Just lift one knee up at a time if that feels accessible to you. This is gonna work your core muscles a lot more. So notice how that feels or keep the knees down, or start to move dynamically in and out. This is a way to build into strength without having to hold. Just one more breath wherever you are. If you wanted to lift both knees up, please feel free in the full uh, forearm plank of the more traditional version. I find all of them to be great and challenging. 
Then come back down, lowering, so you're spreading your hands shoulder width apart, tops of the feet press, drag your belly forward into Sphinx Pose. Feet wide. And here again, don't collapse down, try to press up. Now, if this feels like a bit much, widen your elbows and lower down until it doesn't. Anything you can do to get this lift is going to strengthen the muscles of the upper back and back of the neck. Don't do it at the expense of your lower back. Root down into your feet. Firm up your thighs. Press into your forearms and see if maybe you can draw the belly in a little. Drag the chest forward. Draw the head back in space so you don't have text neck. Big breath in, then exhale, widen your elbows, drag yourself forward and down. Take a moment here, stacking your hands, a brief rest in crocodile. Couple breaths into your belly. Feel free to widen your legs. Feel the belly expanding against the floor as you inhale. Soften downward as you exhale. One more breath. Okay, we'll come back to crocodile in a moment. Take your hands now underneath your shoulders and then walk them back even further so they're more by your low ribs. Feel free to widen them as much as you like as we practice cobra pose. Belly back bends are awesome. If you have a baby you know about tummy time, adults need it too. Let's get to it. Press into the tops of your feet, feet as wide as you want. Press more weight to little toe side. As you inhale, drag on the hands a little, pull up away from the mat, not looking straight ahead, but looking a little at a diagonal. Exhale, lower down. Dynamic cobra. Inhaling, lift up slowly. Maybe just testing how much weight's in your hands by lifting the hands. Exhale, slowly lower. Let's do this a couple more times. If it feels good the last time, maybe just hold for a moment, lifting your hands up, gently sliding them back, and then exhale, lower down, stacking now your opposite hand on top. If you don't remember, just do the way it feels weird. <laughs> and then bend your knees, gentle twist, rocking your legs like a windshield wiper. Really don't worry about the form here. Let this be floppy, legs nice and heavy. This is giving you a wonderful massage against the floor, as well as a gentle release for your lower back. Breathe deeply and slowly. Make circles with the legs. Reverse your circles. All right, now lower your feet down. Let the legs be really wide. We're going to linger in crocodile pose. One of my favorite restoratives when I don't have props, and even when I do. So all you do is just rest your head down. If you prefer to turn the head, you're welcome to. But rest your head, relax your legs. Now breathe into your lower back for this crocodile. Expand out as you inhale and soften down into the floor as you exhale. Keep your breath moving here in this crocodile pose and just take some time to really settle down, to feel the connection to the ground and to yourself. Relax tension from your face and your jaw and your tongue and your eyes. Savor the heaviness of the body as the floor supports you and lets you be a little more at ease. Just a couple more breaths, slowly in and slowly out. A 
One more, inhale through the nose, exhale through the mouth. Let's do it one more time. Inhale through the nose, exhale through the mouth. All right, bring your hands underneath you now, or forearms if your wrists want to break. Press yourself up and back. You choose puppy pose, child's pose, or downward facing dog. All of these options are great. It's always really good to remember as a yoga student that the last option is not the best. That our goal, particularly in gentle, is not to do the hardest thing or what we think we should do, but to really tap in and see what we need in this moment. Take a couple more breaths wherever you are. All right, if you're in child's pose, rise up. If you're in down dog, lower your knees. And we're all going to come into a lunge. So if you do not want to do this without support, you have a wall. Somewhere in your room, you have a wall. So I'll show you first the version on the floor, and then I'm going to show you the version on the wall. Step your right foot up. You can kind of lift your hand to move it out of the way. And you'll tuck your back toes under. Now, if you reaching the floor is pretty tough because it usually means we have to lean down. So I always will use blocks when I have blocks. But if you don't have blocks, put your hands on your front thigh, forearm over forearm, pull your belly in and up, and you might choose to stay right here. This might feel great, very supportive, very stable. Another option is to try lifting up your back knee in this lunge. If neither of these options sound like what you want to do, here's where your wall can come in. Bring yourself right up against the wall and take it into a higher lunge, holding onto the wall for support. Wherever you are, take a couple of breaths and try to find that length from your head to your tail, pulling your belly in and up and feeling the connection that you have through your rooted feet. Two more breaths wherever you are. Try to pull in and lengthen just a little more. All right, now bring the hands, if you're at the, away from the wall, bring your hands to the floor, lower your back knee. We're going to do a rocking lunge and half split. So if you're standing, you'll do it this way. Lunge to half split or pyramid pose. Rocking back and forth to get into the hamstrings and the hip flexors. If you're on the floor, but the floor feels far, either hand on the front thigh as you rock forward and back, this will be a test for your balance for sure, or scoot up to that wall and use the wall for support, lunging forward and then pulling back into the half split. Just play with it. If it feels a little awkward, first, don't worry. It's not about how it looks though. If it doesn't feel good to you, modify it or skip it all together. Just one or two more breaths like this. All right, now we'll come into lizard pose. So the upright standing version of this pose is just to turn your front leg out at about maybe 30, 45 degrees max. I usually do like 30. And then just come into the lunge to get a little external rotation here. If you're kneeling, you'll go from that lunge into external rotation of the hip, widening your stance and bringing your hands both inside of the foot. The wall version on the floor is just like this. Hang out there. So I did not put my blanket in because this carpet is so cushiony, but I'm going to show it now in case you aren't aware. <laughs> you can always, I do all my kneeling work at typically in it with a blanket. I love that cushion. So hang out wherever you are. One more breath. All right. Now straighten your front leg. You can start to pull your toes if you want up a little bit away from the floor. 
You can do this nice little rocking motion. Imagine I have my wall here, so you're rocking on your heel, rolling your leg around in a nice circle, starting from the root at the hip socket. Just notice. Same thing in the upright position. You can do this just the same way. Okay, now bring that leg back. If you're standing, you can just take it away from the wall into a little mini down dog. If you're kneeling, bring that leg back and you choose child's pose, puppy, down dog, or just a little hip shift. All right, my mat's traveling as I lunge. I'm gonna move it up a little bit. <laughs> the case of the traveling mat. All right, so now bringing your opposite leg forward, left foot comes up, and you're gonna notice the difference on your two sides, I hope. So um, bring your forearms to your front thigh and start to lift the back leg. So after side one for me, I feel such a difference, like one side, the side I've just worked, feels so integrated and like it's this fluid, almost like that river feeling, the current running through my body. And the second side is like, wait, what? We're doing yoga? So it just, if you're feeling that, notice it. It's so cool to see the impact. So hanging out in your, however you're doing your lunge, at the wall, uh, kneeling at the wall, or on the forearms. Just a couple more breaths, slow and steady. All right, then lower the knee if you're on the floor. If you're sitting just straight, start to lunge back and forth. So you're gonna lunge forward and then pull back. Picking the variation that works for you on this side or that worked on the other side. If you feel you're not sure what to do, be consistent. Each time you glide forward, inhale, fill up the whole body. Each time you glide back, exhale and find length from your head to your tail. This pose in, opens up and, and kind of just makes some space in the hip flexors, the front of the thigh on the back leg, and the, the back of the thigh on the front leg, if that's not too confusing, your hamstrings. And these are places that often get really cranky um, and cause some back, back crankiness when we don't get enough movement. So now come forward in your lizard. So you'll either turn your front leg out, bring your hands inside, or hands can come onto hips here, or the wall, or the standing version. Hang out for a few breaths in lizard. All right, now coming back into your half split or pyramid pose, finding extended spine, turn the toes up towards you, and then circle on your heel, feeling your whole leg roll around in your hip socket. Reversing those circles when you feel ready for that. All right, now release that leg next to the other one. Again, your choice, child's pose, puppy, down dog, or just a little rock. Now, how are those legs? I hope they both feel that current of river feeling, that lovely connection. Okay, we're gonna come up to standing now. So you can tuck your toes under and you choose, if there's a blanket, maybe scoot it out of the way. You choose how you get there walking up. If you wanna hang out in down dog for a little bit, feel free. And then you can decide, maybe it feels really good on your body to hang down or maybe not. But if you have a chair, any old chair, doesn't have to be a yoga chair, you can always just place your forearms on the chair and hang out there. Wherever you are, if it doesn't feel good to hang, feel free to either come into half forward fold or come up to standing. Wherever you are, big breath in through the nose, exhale through the mouth. Big breath in through the nose. And exhale through the mouth. 
All right. So from your little forward fold, you'll come up through halfway lift, hands to thighs or hips, hinge all the way upright. Big inhale, roll the shoulders up, back and down. Exhale to let them drop. Good, take a full breath in, full breath out. Arriving back where you began, standing. So with your feet about hip width apart, you'll be moving into just a couple more standing poses before we head back down to the floor. So this is a dynamic chair pose. As you inhale, you'll reach your arms up towards the ceiling. If you find balance to be an issue, I encourage you to move to a wall now because we're going to add a balance pose onto this. So big breath in, and then exhale, you'll bend your knees like you're going to sit back in a chair. Doesn't have to be a big bend, and just press your arms up and back, palms up. Inhale, straighten the legs, lift up. Exhale, chair. Notice how this feels. If the arm movement does not feel good to you, hands to hips. Just do upper body hinging and lower body cheering. <laughs> Just a few more breaths. Now we're gonna play with the balance. If you decide, nope, I don't want to, you can stick right here. If you decide, I wanna do tree pose today, go for it. I like to mix up my balance poses in both my practice and teaching because I think it prepares us better for real life. Mm -hmm. So let's start by just taking hands to hips. We'll add the arms in later if you want. So if you're feeling balance to be an issue, I would just come to a wall with your hands just like this. We'll be moving into chair and then standing on one leg. So this is a great way to do it and be balanced. All right, so bending into chair pose, you're gonna shift your weight into one leg and let the other foot just lightly graze the floor. Then bend into chair again and shift the other way. So start out by just keeping the tips of the toes on the floor, and then you might decide to lift up the leg. It's up to you. What I love about this pose is it's very complicated for the brain as you're shifting your weight back and forth, and it's also just a great way to feel what does real balance in the real world look like? Very seldom are we like this when we need to balance in real life. Usually we're like, ah, that. So let's play a little. Now, if you want to add the arms, you can. The leg is welcome to come up as much or as little as you want. Use your breath. I like to inhale when I come up and exhale when I press. One more time with your balance. Woo, all right. And then reach up. Balance is not about being perfect. Exhale, let the perfection go. Big inhale. Exhale. Last time. Exhale. All right. So we'll just do one more standing sequence before we come back to the floor. Widen your legs. Turn your toes out if that feels good. And you're just going to come into a moment of goddess pose. We won't hang around here too long, but here feel as you're pressing into your feet, both inner and outer arches are lifting. And put your hands onto your thighs and just shrug one shoulder forward, looking over the other. And then shrug again, looking over opposite shoulder. If your legs are tired, you'll come up between sides. If they're not tired, you're welcome to keep them bent this whole time. But again, our goal today is to be gentle with ourselves. So it's not about getting a workout in, it's about working in rather than working out. All right, next time when you come back to that second side that you started with, just straighten your legs, turn your toes in, and then fold yourself down to the floor. Hopefully, with the legs wide, it's easier to reach. If not, again, bring your chair in. You can hang out here in the chair. All right. So you can see. I'll move it out of the way. Now just bend into one leg, letting the hip come down, and then bend the other leg and shift. 
This is a little crouching lunge. I've been playing with this one a lot in my own practice because it's a little different and I like to mix it up, but also because it gets into your inner thigh and groin really nicely. All right, then slowly come back to neutral. Start to straighten your legs. If it feels good to you, you have an option to extend your arms forward or to hang down. Or again, the chair. The chair is your best friend in this pose. If you can get a chair or a bed or a counter, it's like a down dog but without weight bearing. So pull your hips back. If you don't have any of those props, take a wall dog. Just a few breaths wherever you are. Feel the rootedness down through your feet. Feel the length through your spine. One more deep inhale. Long exhale. Let's do one more. One more big inhale. And long exhale. All right. Walk your hands back to a neutral spot wherever you are. Soften the knees a little. Put the hands to the hips or the thighs. And hinge all the way up. All right. Coming to the floor, just turn your toes towards the front edge of your mat. Bring your hands down, and you'll just lower yourself if you want one more time with down dog, or even if you want a plank and a chatter. Actually, let's all do this locust pose. I forgot, let's do it. Step back and lower to your belly. And we'll come into just a moment of locust pose for one more little active back bend. So you can either do cobra as we did before, or extend up and back in your locust. Reaching out, get really long. You can always put the hands down here or let them come up. It's up to you. Legs strong. Big, big inhale. Exhale, lower down. Turn the cheek to one side or rest your head in crocodile. Big breath into your belly. All right, hands underneath you. Press all the way up and back into one final Child's pose, puppy or down dog. All right, roll yourself up slowly. Take your time. <sighs> Shift your weight off to one side and come down to sit. Take your legs out in front of you. This is a lovely rocking twist. It's also a massage for your outer hips and thighs. I'm gonna turn a little bit to the side here so you can see what my, my hands are doing as well. So legs about hip width or wider, hands behind you for support. Just start to rock your knees side to side, feeling a nice little massage in your outer thigh and hips and glutes and also feeling the beginnings of a twist, a soft twist. Now we'll accentuate that twist, leaning onto one hand, reach your opposite arm around you and reach it away from where your knee is. And then do the same on the other side, reaching your arm around you, extend the hand away from the knee. Do this a few times at your own pace. Use your breath. Next time when you come over to one side, we'll do just a brief little release for the quads. Bend your back knee and gently pull your foot in towards you. You can come down onto your forearm here. And if this just feels a bit too involved, you can release the leg altogether and just enjoy this very gentle opening for the hips. Couple more breaths wherever you are. All right, then slowly release the foot. If you're on the forearm, rise up and head over to the other side. So reaching back, grab onto your foot gently if that feels good. If it doesn't, again, just don't do it. Not a problem. Feel free to come down onto your forearm if you like. Just take a few breaths, feeling the connection with the floor beneath you. Slow, steady inhales. 
and long, smooth exhales. All right, now walk up onto your hand, release that foot and swing the back leg around. Now you'll be coming all the way down to the floor. We're heading down for just a quick little wind down and then Shavasana. So this is a time to put on socks, to put on a sweater, to grab any blankets that you'd like to cover up with. And if you do have a blanket for your head for Shavasana, it's awesome. So um, you will have the option to do Shavasana lying flat. If you have a chair, I'll show you legs up the chair or legs up the wall. I'm gonna show you now so you won't have to look once we get down there. If you're doing Shavasana or legs up the chair, You'll just place the chair on the mat and the blanket under your head. And let the legs come onto the backrest of the chair. It should feel really lovely. We're not headed there just yet though, so give it a sec. Um, without the chair, you can also use the blanket. Then you'll have the option if you wanted to, to do legs up the wall. To do this pose, you'll simply sit your hips right up against the wall and then roll onto the floor and allow your legs to slide up. You can scoop back as much as you need to or bend the knees, arms in any position that feels comfortable and feel free to use your blanket. So that's where we're heading in just a moment. Come down onto your back. Let yourself come all the way down. Feel free to put the blanket in right away if that feels good to you. And just take a moment to hug the knees in towards your chest. If you have the lights on, this is a great time to turn the lights off if they're kind of in your face, or you can always use a little scarf over your eyes. Start to rock side to side, massaging your back against the floor, communing with the ground. Then make some circles with your legs, both knees in the same direction. Hands can be clasped, or on both of the knees. Massage your back against the floor and breathe into your back. And then circle the other direction. Good, and then get a nice big circle again and a rock coming back to neutral. Big inhale. And exhale, just lower the feet down for the floor for one moment here. We'll just do a brief rocking bridge. So big inhale. Exhale, draw your navel in so you feel a pelvic tilt. Low back stays down, tailbone lifts up a little tiny bit. Inhale, rock the other way. Tailbone comes down, low back curves away. Exhale, flattening the low back keeping the hips relatively grounded, and inhale, rocking the other way. Just play with your rocking bridge for a few moments here, enjoying this softer version of the pose. Really, again, embracing gentleness. Remembering, again, this, the rocks in the river how we can't direct the ducks down the path we want, but how we can invite the conditions that help us to really do the work and then let go of where the ducks may go. A few more slow, deep breaths. And then when you've had enough of that, you'll take your arms out to the sides, maybe at shoulder height in a T-shape or goalpost shape, and just start to rock your knees side to side. Windshield wiper motion once again. Feel this lovely twist and massage. You can let your head move so that your head goes in opposition of your legs. One more breath. And then bring your legs in one final time, taking a moment to do whatever would feel good to you. So you can take little circles with the knees, this time moving the legs in opposite directions. This is a wonderful release for the hips before Shavasana. You could circle 
uh, the legs in the opposite direction then for sure. It could take happy baby pose or any other kind of hip release that might feel good to you, like figure four. Just take a few moments to listen to your own body in this moment and to decide what would feel good and help ease you into relaxation. Couple breaths. Two more slow, steady inhales and exhales. Breathe into the back. Soften as you breathe out. Now, making your way into your final resting pose, choosing from Shavasana with the legs flat on the floor or on the chair, or if you have your bolster, use your bolster. Arms can come a comfortable distance away from the body. If you have a blanket under your head, tuck in around your head. Make it really comfy cozy. Feel free to put on layers. Take any position that would feel good to you right now. Settling into stillness, settling into quiet and ease, and reconnecting with the earth and with your breath. I invite you, if it feels comfortable, to close your eyes or to find a soft place for the eyes to rest and to draw your focus inward. Just as we practiced on that ducky derby sunny day in the mountains, know that all of your efforts today were worthy and important and that now you can let go of those efforts, let go of any goals or outcomes, let go of any worries or things on your mind just for a few minutes to take this time just for you. Relax all of your facial features. Soften the jaw and the tongue. Even feel the eyes relaxing, not seeking outwardly. Let your breath move in any way that feels comfortable to you. And begin to make your arms and legs a little heavier. Notice as the arms and legs get heavy, how the shoulders and the hips begin to relax. Relax the belly, soften through the upper chest, the heart center. And practice being an observer. Stepping back from thinking, planning, judging, to simply watch. I invite you to consider this quote shared from Michael Stone's inner tradition of yoga as you rest. The mind and body belong to a moment to moment process, not to our clinging habits, nor to the way we want things to be or wish they were. So give your mind and body over to this moment this process of relaxing for just a little while longer. Let everything else wait and take this time just for you.
Now slowly begin to deepen your breathing, taking in a longer, smoother inhalation. And as you exhale again, releasing the attachment to the outcome, savoring in this one moment. Couple breaths like that. Try breathing in through your nose and out through your mouth with a little exhale, with a little sigh. Feel free to make any little wiggles with hands or feet, any small movements with the head, or choose to remain still. When you're ready, you'll slowly bend the knees. If you're in legs up the wall, lower the legs down the wall. Roll over onto your side, head down and heavy. And then with a very heavy head, slowly walk your way up to seated, finding yourself against the wall if you like, or in a chair to close this time of practice together. Find a comfortable way to sit with a tall spine, an open chest, and really soft shoulders. Invite the eyes to close or take a soft gazing point and tune in. Notice how it felt to carve out the space and time for yourself to take care of body and mind, to link movement and breath, and to invite a sense of both effort and ease. Let's take a moment to feel into this moment, feel into your body mind state. And as you prepare to leave this part of the practice and head back into the rest of your day, I invite you to remember Abhyasa practice and Vairagya non-attachment. Finding that balance in your day of when you can put in the work while also remembering to let go of the outcome. We'll close now with two full breaths together. Take a full exhale to prepare. Inhale deeply, exhale fully, inhale and exhale. If the eyes are closed, invite them to softly blink open. If you would like, you can draw the palms together in front of the heart. Thank you so much for making this time for yourself today and for joining me for gentle yoga. Namaste.